Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, on behalf of Manila House, this is Bambina Olivares, Director of Programming, welcoming you to today's webinar entitled COVID-19, Vaccines, Treatments, Facts and Controversies, presented in partnership with USD College of Nursing and USD Hospital. The US College, USD College of Nursing, in fact, is celebrating its 75th anniversary this year. Uh, and USD College of Nursing and the USD Hospital um, are among our partners for our um, in-house Hot Meals for Heroes feeding program at Manila House, wherein we, um, your donations um, help us to prepare food for delivery to various frontliners and medical workers all around uh, Metro Manila. Before we begin, um, I'm gonna turn you over to Sarah Salazar of the USD College of Nursing, um, who will um, open on behalf of USD. Sarah. Thank you, Ms. Bambina. Let us all place ourselves in God's holy presence in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of grace, we open our hearts, minds, and souls to worship to you. Thank you that today we dwell in your kingdom and live in your presence. Thank you that as we gather together, we join with all people across the world to glorify your holy name. Come be with us. Please heal us, inspire us, and lead us in our time together. We ask all of this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be worth without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. So today, uh, we find ourselves at a critical juncture in the fight against COVID. The vaccine rollout has begun. Every day, more and more people are being vaccinated, mostly with Sinovac, although there was a limited supply of AstraZeneca in the beginning, which has now apparently run out. At the same time, positive cases of COVID-19 are resurging, so are deaths. We hear about hospitals having no more beds, entire households getting COVID, from grandparents to the helpers, and people we know are getting intubated. So it's quite a frightening time for everyone. Here to discuss the realities of COVID-19 today from diagnosis to treatment to vaccines is a medical doctor of USD Hospital, Dr. Charito Consolacion. She's an alumna of USD, having obtained her degrees in nursing and medicine from the university. She's also a nephrologist. In 2019, she obtained her master's in hospital administration, graduating magna cum laude. She is also a previous winner of the prestigious Kawad Santo Tomas Award in 2018 for research and community service. It's a privilege to have her here with us today. So before we begin, let me just um, reiterate a few ground rules. This webinar is being recorded and will be up on the Manila House YouTube channel in a day or so. Please use the chat box and the Q&A box for any questions and comments, and we'll get to your questions as we go along. Um, now, um, let me turn you over to Dr. Consolation. And just before that, we were supposed to have Dr. Um, Angeles with us as well today. Um, unfortunately, he had a family emergency and he's unable to join us. But Dr. Consolation is going to, you know, give us a really great overview of the situation we find ourselves in today. Dr. Consolation, over to you. Okay, thank you, Mom Bambina. So, good afternoon. Um, I would like to thank the organizer of this online talk, a special mention to Mr. Jose Arcelia, the very generous brother of our dean, uh, Rowena Escolar Chua, and to you, Ms. Bambina Olivares, no, Director of PR and Arts, Culture and Education Program, Manila House, and uh, for the uh, University of Santo Tomas College of Nursing, okay, uh, which I consider as my second family. So to start it, uh, to start with um, with um, presentation, um, I would like to first, no, uh, to declare a non-conflict of interest. No, I am not affiliated to any um, company that uh, facilitates no the utilization of any type of vaccine or any platform of vaccine. So to start, no, let me give you a short overview of how this COVID-19 pandemic started. So in the past months, we have faced the most challenging of the time no, in our country, not only in our country, but actually in the whole uh, world. Okay, With this COVID-19 pandemic, 
drastically affecting almost our all no, lives, whether poor, middle class, and even the rich uh, group. So this started basically no, from uh, Wuhan, China, okay, wherein the WHO has alerted no, the, the, the entire continent no, or the entire world okay, because of the outbreak of pneumonia in Wuhan, China, okay, uh, which was detected December 31, 2019. And this was followed by cascading events until finally, no, okay, there is a first confirmed case of NCOB in the Philippines last January 30, 2020. Okay? And in the... Um, uh, uh, as we go through no, the different phases, we were able to coin the name of SARS-CoV-2, no, which is typically and commonly known now as COVID-19. And uh, based from the history that we had no, from last year, we had this ECQ starting March 15, no, 2020. So just to give you no, a, a background, no, there is um, a magnitude of uh, events no, that had transpired, okay? There are countless undeclared waves no, to, uh, to, to describe no, how things are, are happening right now, okay? With the latest surge no, of this COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, just to share no, the latest uh, uh, report no, coming from DOH, okay? As of yesterday, new cases or new confirmed cases no, were uh, marked at uh, 4,648. Um, I just don't know the, the latest count no, for today, but uh, it is of note that um, among these COVID cases, no, we have 297 deaths and only 197 recovered cases. So since then, the Philippines has been responding to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 pandemic and has been implementing numerous interventions in varying levels and degrees of success. Coronavirus no, had spread from person to person, mainly through respiratory route, after an infected person cough, sneeze, sings, talks, or even breathe. Now, preventive measures no, that are being used now has able to reduce no, the chances of infection and just to name some of these preventive measures, no, we were asked to stay uh, at our own homes. We are um, mandated no, to wear masks, no, face shields. No. Even uh, uh, for, for me, you know, as a frontliner, I, I even wear my mask no, inside our home. Okay? So natatanggal lang po yung mask ko sa, sa sarili ko. Okay, habang kumakain. So even sa house, no, I would wear my, my mask, no, particularly if I am um, trying to have some form of physical contact no, to my children kasi uh, very exposed po kami no, as frontliners. We are forced no, to avoid crowded places. So very limited po yung naging uh, pagpunta natin sa mga malls, no, sa mga commercial areas. We are asked to maintain a certain distance from each other. So our recommendation is at least one meter to 1.5 meters. No? And we have to do some modifications in order to improve the ventilation no? of our uh, house, of our working uh, area. No? And even here in the hospital, we have to do some modifications in order to provide isolation rooms for our patients. We are asked no, to carry our own alcohols, to wash our hands every now and then, okay? And to at least no, to maintain good respiratory hygiene, avoid touching our eyes, nose, or mouth with our unwashed hands. Although the route of entry is through the respiratory tract, we know that COVID-19 can affect various organs in the body starting from the sensory receptors in our nose and taste buds. Kaya nga po meron tayong tinatawag na common presentation. Ano? In medical term, we call it anosmia. No? What is anosmia? It is the absence of smell. No? Pagka hindi ka na nakakaamoy, what they usually do is, di po ba yung Bix, no? yung Bix Vaporub? 
Pag daw po yung Bix Bay Porab, hindi nyo na maamoy kasi very strong ang smell niya. Ano? That could be an initial sign no? na baka nagkakaroon ka ng COVID infection. No? So the absence of smell in medical terms is called anosmia. And another um, sensory no, that uh, is missing is the uh, ability of our taste buds no, to appreciate the taste of food. And we call that disgusia no? or the loss of taste. So para lang po familiar kayo sa mga terminologies, no? anosmia for the loss of smell and disgusia no? for the loss of taste. Now it can also affect the GI tract causing abdominal pain and LBM. So ito po yung mga atypical respiratory symptoms na pwede nating ma-encounter ma no? for those with uh, COVID infection. So hindi po lahat sila ay nagpe-present ng uh, influenza-like illness. Yung ubo, sipon. Ano? Even people with headache, no? stomach pain or abdominal pain, those with LBM can also be a COVID suspect or patients no? who are probable COVID infected. Okay? Now, the lower respiratory tract can also be affected or in most cases is affected and causing difficulty in breathing and hypoxia or low oxygen saturation. Kaya recommended na nga rin po na you carry with you a pulse oximeter no? wherein you can check your oxygen level every now and then. And for those who have uh, aged uh, relatives no? okay, in, in, in your own houses, it is advisable that you have a, a portable oxygen uh, regulator and an obs, uh, portable oxygen supply that can you can use anytime. No, somebody would have difficulty no in breathing and would have low oxygen saturation. Now, aside from low oxygen, no, uh, a patient with COVID no may also complain of generalized muscle pain. Easy fatigability, so yan po yung parang tatrang kasuhen, ano? Masakit yung mga kasukasuan, masakit yung laman, no? o yung kalamnan, okay? And among the dreaded complication is the thing we call cytokine storm, no? Wherein all the inflammatory markers of an individual is very elevated. So ano po tong mga inflammatory markers? We have the C3, the interleukin 6, no? We have the procalcitonin, these are the inflammatory markers that we usually request no, for patients with severe to critical COVID. And most of them no, may die of heart complications and pulmonary embolism. So pulmonary embolism is the blockage of our pulmonary circulation in the form of thrombosis. So ang thrombosis po ay uh, form blood clots. No? And ito pong form blood clots na to, no? siya po kasi yung magbabara sa oxygenation and later on will cause the demise of the individual. So patient with acute respiratory syndrome no? can experience a range of clinical manifestation starting from no symptoms of critical illness okay, up to the what we call the severe or the critically ill individual. This slide will discuss no, the, the, the clinical presentation according to the illness severity. So makikita nyo po na meron tayong mga asymptomatic or what we call the pre-symptomatic no, infected individual. Actually, ito po yung mga nakakatakot na makasalumuha. No? Because since they are not symptomatic or they are asymptomatic, you may be associated to this no, people or individual and unknowingly, nahahawahan na po pala kayo no, ng COVID. Kasi nga, bakit hindi kayo takot na makasalamuha sila is because they are not symptomatic or they do not present no, with the common signs and symptoms of um, influenza-like symptoms. Then we have the mild, the moderate illness. Now, the mild cases can be still managed at home. But again, no, you should be closely monitored by your family physician or kung hindi man po, no, you could probably engage a doctor to do a teleconsultation or a telemedicine consultation so that someone no, will be informed of your current situation and this doctor may also guide you on how to recover. No? But for those with moderate illness to severe up to critical illness, these are the group of 
patients no that has to be admitted and then closely monitored kasi ito po yung mga nangangailangan ng tinatawag natin na high flow oxygen and at certain point no may require mechanical uh, ventilator so ito po yung mga natu tube no na, na nalalagyan ng tubo sa bibig and eventually nahuhuk po no sa mechanical ventilator So in general, adults with uh, COVID infection can be grouped in the following severity of illness. However, the criteria for each category may overlap or vary across clinical guidelines and clinical trials. Category, as mentioned, would start from asymptomatic or the pre-symptomatic and to the severe no, or critical illness. Now, important to note that the severity may vary no so again the severity may vary according to the immunocompetence of the individual so meaning yung capacity po ng katawan ninyo no na magfight back kasi this is a just a typical virus no so kung kayo po ay immunocompetent ibig sabihin healthy po kayo healthy po ang pangangatawan niyo you can your symptoms or your infectivity may range from no pre symptomatic or asymptomatic to the mild type of COVID infection. That is if you are immunocompetent. So ibig sabihin, kaya po ng katawan ninyo na mag-fight back against the COVID virus. But then, no, if you are aged, so yun po yung mga matatanda, no, and those with comorbidities, like yung may mga diabetes, hypertension, or yung may mga... Uh, chronic diseases no that would require like yung mga may COPD no yan po yung mga chronically nagka-cough may uh, requirement for oxygen no sila po yung common no na individuals na nagkakaroon po ng complication once they are infected with covid infection so this no slide will show us the most common medications being used for the treatment of covid infection starting from the mild to the severe critically ill patient so magsisimula po tayo sa vitamins no so you would see people taking vitamins no vitamin c with zinc even vitamin d so ang common recommendation po niyan is to take vitamin c with zinc twice a day so mag mag -me mega doses po tayo ng uh, vitamins then we have um, iv antibiotics so depending on what your doctor will prescribe no you may start with uh, oral antibiotics so ang pinaka common po diyan ay acitromycin if you are familiar with acitromycin and then um coamoxiclav levofloxacin no those are the common no oral antibiotics that we give no for mild uh, covid infection now some patients may complain of um, continuous coughing so they may receive no antitussive so yung antitussive po kung familiar kayo sa mga sinicod or we uh, we call it in in its uh, medical term butamirate citrate no to suppress the coughing Kasi Kasi yung sunod-sunod po na pag-ubo, no, it can cause desaturation or pagbaba po ng oxygen. And that can also cause difficulty in the breathing no, of the infected person. Okay? Then we have uh, after oral, no, oral antibiotic, tapos hindi pa rin po kaya, then we start this patient on IV antibiotic. Now we have the antiviral uh, medications. So ang pinaka famous po dyan ay remdesivir. Now, unfortunately, remdesivir cannot be bought no? sa ordinary pharmacy. You have to uh, get no or secure an FDA approval mismo, no? yung hospital. And kapag ang hospital po, hindi po niya pwedeng i-commercially no? ibenta ito. So the remdesivir in a hospital is used only for patients admitted in the hospital. The same is true with our interleukin uh, receptor antagonist, no? yung tocilizumab. No? Unfortunately, tocilizumab is out of stock now. So when everything else fails, no? so kunyari, nag-remdesivir na siya, nag-IV antibiotic na siya, naka-antitusib na siya, naka uh, steroids na siya or naka de yun nga, dexamethasone. Na, no? Then the next in line is the tocilizumab. 
unfortunately, this is very, very expensive. A preparation of this cost around 38 to 40,000 a vial. Okay, then we have this plasma transfusion. So we call it yung covalent plasma. Then I have mentioned already corticosteroids. So corticosteroids po are anti-inflammatory. So they are commercially known as dexamethasone, methylprednisolone, or prednisone. Okay, and then we have the anticoagulants in the form of heparin or low molecular weight heparin. So the main objective in giving this anticoagulants is to prevent blood clots no, or thrombosis. Now for patients who are severe or critically ill, no, in most cases, rather than starting them on high flow oxygen, they would require invasive O2 supplementation in the form of intubation. And later on, they will be hooked to a mechanical ventilator. Now, patients, no, as mentioned, those with elevated no, inflammatory markers may require hemoperfusion. So ito po yung specialty ko no, as a nephrologist. Ito po yung uh, isang treatment modality na ino-offer namin sa mga moderate, severe to critical cases no, na COVID na high risk to have cytokine storm. So uh, hemoperfusion basically makes use of a cartridge. No? Ito po yung cartridge. Okay? So para po siyang filter. And once the patient undergoes this hemoperfusion, dadaan po yung dugo no? ng pasyente from this circuit, papunta po dito sa cartridge, lilinisin po siya as parang filter, lahat po ng inflammatory no? cells o yung tinatawag nating cytokines, will adhere to this cartridge or filter. And paglabas po sa, sa cartridge, ang assumption po is lesser na po yung load ng inflammatory cells, no? pabalik sa pasyente. So despite of this the mentioned therapeutics, no? um, actually there is no specific um, uh, treatment, no? Actually, lahat po ng treatment na ito, except for the antibiotics, no? Uh, the intubation, the use of ECMO machine, no? Uh, the hemoperfusion, uh, sila po yung talagang basically known na, no? But uh, the only, uh, kumbaga, the only uh, thing that we can do, no? To prevent this, no? Uh, COVID infection is to be really no, be careful in protecting ourselves and our family. Okay, so very important no, that we we try not to um, uh, manage no, our patients uh, symptomatically. No? So kasama na rin po dyan yung fluid therapy, no? even proning position no meron po tayo yung nakukuhang mga proning uh, pillows no kasi they say na kapag po kayo ay naka naka what's prone uh, naka sara ano na nga yung prone naka dapa no so dapa yung dapa, dapa. No? <laughs> yun. pag naka prone ka kasi okay na oxygenate daw po no pati po yung uh, distal portion and yung backside no ng ating lungs no and therefore mas gumaganda po yung uh, oxygenation no ng ating lungs okay so very important po talaga that first is prevention second is early detection and third kung talaga pong um medyo 2 3 days po ay naglalagnat pa rin, no? Uh, you don't, you have the anosmia, you have the disgusia. Uh, you have to really consult, no? A doctor, okay? Whether telemedicine po yan or pumunta kayo sa emergency room, you have to be guided, no? Kasi natitreat naman po siya, curable po siya, no? Kasi virus are said to be self-limiting. It just so happened that we have to boost our immune system and we have to make the necessary uh, adjustment no okay with regards to ano ba yung kailangan ng katawan natin to make us less symptomatic okay so in the light of this covid-19 pandemic no 
the Philippines uh, was declared under a state of public health emergency, okay? And subsequently, no, our president issued the Republic Act number 11494, or what we call the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act, okay? Which was enacted, no, authorizing our president to suppress COVID-19 pandemic through the procurement of drugs and vaccines. So when you say drugs, kasama na po dyan yung mga antiviral drugs, yung mga interleukin-6, no? antagonist receptor blockers, and the uh, controversial vaccines nga po na meron tayo ngayon. So vaccination against uh, COVID-19 offers the possibility of significantly reducing no? severe morbidity and mortality and transmission when deployed alongside with the minimum public health standards and improved clinical management of symptoms. Now, it is important to note no, that the spike glycoprotein of this virus, so alam ko naman po, no, sawang-sawa na kayo sa itsura ng COVID virus. Diba? Yan yung bilog na maraming spike-spike na gano'n. Ano? Actually po, yung spike glycoprotein no, na component nitong virus Ito po yung major target, no? Okay, this is the major target of our neutralizing antibodies and a potential starting point for the creation of our vaccines. So that how does this vaccine works? Now, this slide will show the immune responses induced by vaccine. So actually, so kung iraran through ko po kayo, no? So simplified po ito, no? Na how does a vaccine work, no? So this usually start with this um, antigen, no? Presenting cell. So ito po to, no? And it can process vaccine antigen and present it, no? To your CD4. T cells, so mga inflammatory cells po natin to, CD4 cells and our CD8 cells. Okay, now this CD8 cells can stimulate no, our cytokines and in turn acquire the ability to attack, no? ito po yun, to attack the infected cells inside the body. Okay, now the TH2, okay. On the other hand, this one, okay, aids in the differentiation of what we call B cells. So ito po yung humoral side ng immune system natin. And this activation of our B cells allows now these B cells to differentiate and eventually produce what we call our neutralizing antibodies. So ito po ngayon yung ginagamit ng katawan natin in order to fight back this COVID infection. So anong ibig sabihin nito? Uh, will you be free from being infected? The answer is no. Anong ibig pong sabihin? Pwede ka pa rin ba na ma, kumaga after the vaccination, pwede ka pa rin bang magkaroon ng COVID? The answer is yes. Pero since you already have this no, antibodies, it lessens now the severity of your clinical manifestation. So ano po yung message po nito? No? You, can, you can still get no, or you can still be infected no, after having been vaccinated. Pero ang, ang message is that if you get infected, since meron ka ng neutralizing antibodies, yung manifestation po actually at saka yung severity naglelesen. So chances of mortality, meaning mamamatay ba ako? Most likely, baka hindi. No? Okay? Kung let's say you are immunocompetent tapos na-infect na ka lang, since you have already the neutralizing antibodies, baka po yung signs and symptoms and yung category or classification of the illness will not be severe or critical anymore. So ang talagang iniiwasan po natin sa bakuna is yung mamatay tayo because of the severity of the illness. But we don't prevent, no? unlike any other vaccines that we know, kasi may mga vaccines tayo na kapag nabakunahan ka, 
hindi ka na magkakaroon ng infection, di po ba? Hindi po ganon ang COVID vaccine. No? Okay, you can still be infected, pero since may neutralizing antibody ka na from your previous vaccination, hindi na po ganon ka-severe no? ang reaction ng katawan mo when you are again infected. Okay? Now, this slide on the other hand shows the advantages and the disadvantages of the different types of vaccines from the inactivated vaccines and the life attenuated vaccines. So we have this one. Po, no? So these are the advantages and the disadvantages. Vaccines with DNA and RNA component. So ito po yung advantages niya and disadvantages together with the advantages and the disadvantages of the RNA vaccines. And we also have what we call vaccines made out of subunits, okay? And those vaccines that are created out of a vector vaccine. So these are the vaccines that are generally constructed from a carrier virus. So most common uh, carrier virus is the adenovirus po. No? So it's like per, parang mayroong isang virus, i-inject mo doon yung spike protein ng coronavirus, and yun po yung i-inject sa iyo as a vector type of vaccine. Okay? So... Just to summarize, no, ito po yung mga common no, vaccine develop, developer na alam natin and their different types of technology platforms. So ano po ba yung mga available sa Philippines? So we have the Sinovac. So this is form an inactivated type. We have uh, Novovax. So although hindi pa po ito nakakarating sa Pilipinas, no, we have Covovax no, from Unilab. So this is from a subunit. Okay? Meron po sa ibang bansa yung Janssen, Gamaleya, no? Okay, these are made of a viral vector. Now, sa Philippines, we have already this AstraZeneca, again, made out of viral vector. And yung pinaka-common po na nagamit sa US is Pfizer, no? Okay, and Moderna, which is made up of mRNA subunit. Okay. So this also uh, compares no, the different types of vaccine. No? So as you would see, all of them are still under phase three clinical trial. They are being used no, under the emergency use authorization from FDA. They are given in two doses. No? Uh, the minimum is three weeks, no? so 21 days apart. The maximum is 12 weeks apart, which is for AstraZeneca. Now, to maintain no, the potency and effectivity of the vaccine, we have to maintain the cold chain. No? So, dito po nagkakatalo no, yung mga iba't ibang bakuna. Kasi kung makikita po natin, no, okay, meron pong mga vaccine na kailangan as uh, negative as 70 degrees no, okay, centigrade. And meron naman pong iba na pwedeng parang refrigerator type lang or freezer type lang. No? So sa atin being a, a country na medyo mainit, no? mukhang mas madali po sa ating mag-maintain ano, ng cold chain kung ang requirement lang ng vaccine is nasa 2 to 8 degrees centigrade lang. No? Lalo na if you are to roll out these vaccines no? sa mga barangay or sa mga LGU. Okay? Now, as for the efficacy, take note, no, the lowest will be coming from AstraZeneca, 70.4%. And uh, the rest no, are as stated here. Po. Okay. So, as for the prioritization no, of the eligible group, no, the primary goal in identifying the eligible population and vaccination is to directly reduce mortality and morbidity and maintain the most critical essential services. The second goal is to control transmission and minimize disruption of social, economic, and security function. And the third goal is to resume the country's essential activities to near normal. So this slide will show the selection process as being used by DOH, no? For the prioritization of eligible groups, the selection of priority eligible group A 
fulfills the primary goal. So makikita nyo po, no? starting from the frontliners, okay, sila po yung A1, no? to the category A5, which are the uniform personnel. Then we have the category B, which addresses the secondary goal. So we have the teachers, the school workers, no? up to the other remaining workforce. And lastly, we have the category C, no? which addresses the tertiary goal. Okay? So this no, will include the remaining Filipino citizen. Okay? So again, no? as frontliner, so nandun po kami sa priority A no? because we uh, maintain the order no? of the medical um, Kumbaga, eh, the medical situation or the ability of the country to address no, the medical needs of our patient. Okay? So, um, the category B, no, or what we call the economic frontliners, no, would be, uh, sila po yung tinatawag na mga workforce naman, ano? yung mga nagtatrabaho sa mga food production, medicine production, no? or any companies that is um, involved or is required in order to uh, jumpstart again no, the economy of the country. Okay? So very important po that we follow this prioritization. And yun nga, sabi nga natin, why do we need but no, to, vaccine, to vaccinate? Ilan ba dapat ang kailangan mabakunahan? No? Okay? And... Uh, how do we roll out no these vaccines para ma-cover po no yung mga target population or yung priority population na sinasabi okay so so far no okay we are have we have this health protocol no that allows us to cope with the pandemic so sabi nga natin we have this um, social distancing we have hand washing we have this wearing masks but but still, no, they are not enough no, to protect us. So what is important and what the government is trying to achieve is to have herd immunity no, induced by vaccination. So paano po natin ma-achieve itong herd immunity if we are able to vaccinate at least 70% no, of our entire population? This is similar to what we did, no? Kaya po na eradicate po natin ang smallpox. Okay? So, with the question na is it really necessary to be vaccinated? So, isa lang naman po ang sagot natin diyan. Yes, no? Okay? Vaccine offers one of the ways, no, in order for us to control and somehow end this pandemic. Okay? So how safe no okay are are this vaccine so napakita ko naman po dun sa table kanina no with regards to the efficacy no and the requirement for us to maintain no the potency and effectiveness of the drug okay now it is understandable that many of us are still unconvinced and hesitating to be vaccinated majority of these vaccines as previ as previously shown are still in their phase three clinical trial okay but take note that these trials are large enough no to detect any major safety concerns they have underwent no extensive reviews by several groups no so sino tong mga groups na to we have the world health organization we have the fda okay and there are stringent protocols no, that are being followed, particularly here in our country. Kaya nga po, di ba, ilang beses na po tayong nag-roll yun ng ECQ, MECQ, uh, ano pa ba yun, Ma'am Sara, GCQ, ano pa ba yung mga klase ng Q na hindi natin na, na undergone, di ba? So paulit-ulit lang po yan. Ano? Ito po yung mga protocols na ginagawa natin para lang makontain natin yung situation. No? So right now, Ano po bang category natin? MECQ. No? We, we are under modified uh, ECQ. Tama po, no? Okay. So, 
actually part of the surveillance is the monitoring of the adverse events no so very important po yan kasi uh, uh, just to share no actually po dun sa recent rollout na nagawa natin sa sa mga hospital um, after you have been vaccinated you will be given this QR code no then yung QR code po na yan okay para siyang Google form po that you have to answer every day to monitor lang po your signs and symptoms no and then there is that uh, selection there na kahit wala kang signs and symptoms you have to check no or cross out okay and this is required no for 6 months no so daily kang magsasagot no for 6 months for those without comorbidities no but one year no daily for one year for those patients with comorbidities o doon po sa mga tinatawag nating quote and quote vulnerable group. Okay, so ulitin ko, how do the country or how do DOH monitor these adverse events? So may QR code po tayo, no? This is based on how we roll out the vaccines, no? Meron pong QR code na pino-provide sa bawat individual na nababakunahan and they are instructed no to answer these QR codes daily no kung wala kang comorbidity you have to answer this for 6 months no pero pag may comorbidity ka at you belong to the vulnerable age group you have to answer this for 1 year okay now the the basic principle no okay is that all vaccines are carefully tested so many, no, they all go through no, a, uh, a clinical trial phase. So alam po natin that majority of these uh, vaccines are under the phase 3 clinical trial in order to test for their safety and effectiveness. The vaccine manufacturers and suppliers were given what we call this authorization for emergency use and continuous monitoring for problems and side effects are being done to detect this adverse effect against the vaccine. So katulad nga nung sinabi ko, no? six months for those without um, comorbidities and one year no? for those with comorbidities. Now, ang tanong, is it safe na itrust natin no? yung uh, emergency uh, authorization okay, for the use of vaccine? The answer is yes. No? Kasi po, continuously po siyang monitor ng ating gobyerno, no? particularly the DOH, para malaman po kung at a certain point, no? kaya kung makikita nyo po, ang tagal ng monitoring, no? six months to one year. At a certain point, part po tayo ng clinical trial. So kumbaga, pag nabakunahan ka, isa ka dun sa mga inaaral nila no? or isa ka sa mga inoobserbahan nila whether you will develop any adverse event or any adverse effect no after you are vaccinated okay so ang tanong lang po ngayon sino dapat no ang hindi mabakunahan okay so who should not be vaccinated actually po no there is no absolute contraindication okay ang talagang sinasabi lang nila no na dapat hindi mabakunahan or Kung mabakunahan man, dapat under the supervision of a physician or an allergologist are those individuals with prior history of allergy. Okay? So uulitin ko po, there is no clear-cut contraindication kasi kahit po yung may mga allergies, binabakunahan din po namin eh. But the thing is, no, kung alam mo na may allergy ka, whether gamot, pagkain, or any any material, no, you just have to consult your doctor so that you will be guided properly, no. So absolute contraindication would be prior history of allergy. Pero sabi nga po natin, based from our practice and based from my experience, dito sa recent, no, rollout namin, kahit yung may allergy po pinabakunahan namin, as long as they are well at Vice and they are well monitored po no after the vaccination. So the only current contraindication to COVID-19 vaccination is an allergy, no, is an allergy to a 
previous dose of COVID-19 vaccine or any of its components. So, ibig sabihin po, ako, nagpabakuna ako ng Sinovac, no? And then, during the first dose ko ng Sinovac, nagkaroon po ako ng anaphylaxis or what we call yung hypersensitivity reaction. Nagirapan ako huminga, na, na namula po ako, or di kaya bumaksak bigla ang blood pressure ko. Then, it means that my absolute contraindication is that I am highly sensitive to that type of vaccine. So yun lang po yung absolute contraindication. So meaning, hindi ka talaga dapat tumanggap no, ng second dose kasi nagkaroon ka ng anaphylactic reaction doon sa first dose. Okay? So who are those people who should not receive no, COVID-19 vaccines? No? So again, sabi nga natin, those with allergic response, but from our own experience, no, kahit po yung may mga hypersensitivity or allergic reaction, from prior no, encounter with our intake of medication, binakunahan din po namin. It's just that they are well-guided and they are closely monitored po okay, immediately after and even after no, 48 hours no, are receiving the vaccination. Okay, So patients who have experienced an immediate allergic reaction, okay, whether mild, or severe, yung pong nagkaroon ng anaphylaxis after receiving the first dose, should not receive the second dose. Patient to have history of allergic reaction or anaphylaxis to certain vaccine no, uh, ingredients no, such, such as your uh, polyethylene glycol no, found in colonoscopy preparation or laxative. Those with allergies to polysorbate so these are materials no, found in the vascular graft materials, surgical gels, pedulated medications. No? So these are the materials no, that when you are allergic no, to, you should not receive this COVID-19 vaccine. Okay? So ano po yung pinakamahalaga? Okay? So that um, I just want to, uh, to emphasize lang po no, na Kung sa unang dose pa lang, no? or kung sa unang bakuna pa lang ninyo sa COVID, no? okay? against COVID, ay meron na kayong allergic reaction. Okay? So nagkaroon kayo ng rash, nahirapan kayong huminga. No? Okay? Unang-una, you have to report no? and uh, inform no? your physician and the facility okay? na natanggapan nyo or yung nagbigay sa inyo ng bakuna. No? And ang pinaka-importante is that you should not receive the second dose. Okay? So very important na huwag na po kayong tumanggap ng second dose if you experience no, this hypersensitivity reaction after receiving the first dose. Okay? Now what about allergies no, to food or medicines? Okay? So who are those people who will need further okay, evaluation? Actually, these are pe people or patients no, who have uh, experienced no, immediate allergic reaction such as urticaria, angioedema. So ito po yung bigla na lang namumula yung mukha no? or bigla pong parang nagkakaroon ng spasm sa lieg, no, yung parang hindi makahinga or parang hindi makalunok. No? Yan po yung angioedema na tinatawag. No? Yung parang paglumunok, parang hindi na makalunok. No? or those no patients na biglang nahihirapang huminga okay difficulty of breathing no so regardless of severity whether mild lang siya yung parang mm, parang hirap akong huminga or parang masikip or parang mabigat ang dibdib ko no kahit ganun ka simple lang po yung manifestation after the first dose then we discourage no receiving the second dose okay and we discourage no people uh, receiving vaccinations no, that are not supervised no, by their physician. So technically, pagka may mga ganito po kayong instances or condition, no, so let's say, pag gumain ka ng shrimp or pagka, kunyari, gumamit ka ng isang rubber material no, and bigla kang nakahirapang huminga, nanikip ang lalamunan, nag hoarseness yung voice nyo, then ang recommendation po is you have to be guided properly by your physician before you receive any type or any 
a kind of this vaccine, okay? And then all vaccinated patients, no, with the above uh, signs and symptoms, no, must be observed longer. So sa ang recommendation po kasi sa actual vaccination rollout, no, we only require them to stay 15 to 30 minutes, no. So after 15 to 30 minutes, we send them home. We just advise them to answer the QR code. No? But then for those individuals po na high risk na tinatawag kasi because they have this history of uh, allergies, we uh, recommend po na they have to stay longer, no? 30, uh, uh, almost uh, mga one hour po, no? one hour to two hours po no? okay? after they are vaccinated so that we can closely monitor kung magkakaroon po sila ng adverse event okay after being vaccinated okay now if a person has allergic reaction to food no or medication okay who can receive no this covid-19 vaccines so actually po no you can receive covid-19 vaccines kung ang allergic reaction niyo naman ay not associated to the components that I have mentioned kanina. Okay? So kung meron lang kayong allergic reaction sa pagkain, no? or may allergic kayo dahil nakalanghap kayo ng dust, pollen, no? or nagkaroon kayo ng allergic reaction dahil namantal kayo after kayo makagat ng insect, no? or nag-take kayo, let's say, ng, paracet, uh, ng uh, antibiotic, no? like yung mga penicillin-based antibiotic, no? and nagkaroon kayo ng allergic reaction, then you can still be vaccinated po because the components found in this no, allergens po are not closely related to the components of the vaccines causing the hypersensitivity reaction. So, ibig sabihin po, kahit na meron kayong ganitong history ng allergies, pwede pa rin po kayong mabakunahan. Yun nga lang, tulad ng sabi ko, you, has, you have to be properly guided and you have to seek the uh, advice of your doctors. And uh, after being vaccinated, no, kailangan po siguro mas matagal po kayong uh, oobserbahan no, doon sa ating uh, vaccination site. Okay? Now, other patients no, with immunodeficiency or autoimmune disease no, like Guillain-Barre no, or Bell's palsy can also be vaccinated. But again, no, sabi nga natin, it has to be consulted and properly guided by their physician. Okay. Now, are those patients no, okay, taking uh, corticosteroids, no, those patients with controlled asthma, or those patients with allergic rhinitis, pwede ba silang mabakunahan? Ang sagot po ay yes, no? Okay? They can also receive our COVID vaccine. So kahit na meron kang allergic cough every morning, yung yung ubo ng ubo, no? At bahing ng bahing every morning. Meron pong kasong ganyan eh, no? Na pagising mo pa lang sa umaga, bahing ka ng bahing or may mga post nasal drip. Basta hindi po COVID yung mga manifestation na yon, ha? you can be vaccinated no so ang ang take home message lang po nito is that when in doubt no in, when in doubt always consult no your allergy specialist po no so you have to be guided no and probably be monitor ng longer no compared to the other uh, general population kung may history po kayo ng allergy okay so again ano uh, basta po yung allergies ninyo hindi po related sa component ng COVID vaccine, no? you can be vaccinated. Okay? But yun nga, no? ang take-home message is that kung magpapabakuna po kayo, dapat ipagbigay alam po ninyo no? sa inyong doktor okay? upang uh, mabigyan po kayo ng preparation and mag-guide po kayo kung anong gagawin in case na magkaroon kayo ng hypersensitivity reaction after being injected po or after receiving your COVID vaccine. Okay? So sabi nga, um, normally we just monitor them 15 minutes but for those patients with severe reaction po no, from any type of allergies, no, we usually actually um, monitor them no for at least an hour or even longer okay if needed okay now the side effects no of this um, 
vaccines are called reactogenicity, no? So we should know, no, what to expect, no? Okay, after uh, receiving the vaccines, no, so that we will be able to prepare ourselves, no, as to what uh, possibly yung mararamdaman natin, ano, para hindi rin tayo takot. Kasi yun po ang karaniwang nagiging problem, eh, yung, yung facing the unknown, no, at saka yung uh, possibility na baka mahirapan akong huminga, baka mag mamula ako, baka bumagsak ang blood pressure ko, or baka mag-high blood ako, no. So ito po yung mga bagay na we want to prevent, no. Okay? And nakita naman po namin ito no, dun sa ating rollout na may mga patients po kami, even our medical clerks and medical interns as young as 22, 23 years old po. No? Nung nabakunahan sila, very normal po yung blood pressure at the start of their vaccine ano? or prior to the injection of vaccine. Pero pagkatapos po ng bakuna, nako, nagwa-140, nagwa-150 yung blood pressure. No? So ang pinaka-importante lang po talaga is knowing what to expect. And no, prepared na po tayo kung sakali man na magkaroon po tayo ng ganitong reaction. Okay? So reactogenicity is defined as a subset of reaction no? okay? that is usually observed after we receive our vaccine. No? And this is usually described as physical manifestation of inflammatory response of our body because we had received the vaccines. Okay? So if in case no, magkaroon tayo ng side effect no? while we are on the vaccination site or on site okay now depende po yan sa severity ng ng uh, reaction so sabi nga natin the reaction may may be as uh, mild as sinisipong ka lang binabahing ka lang may konting itchiness no or it could be as severe as nahirapan na kung huminga no or nahilo or di kaya ay uh, bumagsak ang blood pressure Opposite din po, pwede kayong magkaroon ng hypersent, uh, hypertension, ano? so, tulad nga ng sabi ko. No? But the thing is, kapag ka, nagkaroon ka ng adverse event or uh, mild no? uh, allergic reaction, at least nasa on-site pa po tayo or na doon tayo sa site ng vaccination. No? Kasi uh, it is expected that on the vaccination site, they should be able to give you the immediate antidote or treatment. So ano po yung antidote or treatment? Now, for the mild signs and symptoms, we usually give antihistamine. So, ano pong example ng mga antihistamine? Loratidine, Citerisin, no? Iterax, no? yan po yung mga common na um, uh, antihistamine na ibinibigay natin. No? Pwede rin po Benadryl, no? kaya lang medyo may grogi na effect ang Benadryl. Or you may also uh, be given anti-inflammatories like uh, steroids. No? Kapag medyo moderate na yung uh, reaction, no? they can be given hydrocortisone. No? But for those with severe anaphylaxis, they would be given epinephrine or norepinephrine. Okay? So this is usually given at 0.3 to 0.5 ml intramuscularly. No? And the uh, patient patient is usually monitored so naka sa, sa vaccination site po usually may naka-prepare na bed dyan, no meron tayong emergency cart no yung emergency cart meron yang intubating set meron siyang available na IV stand IV fluids no and other cardiac drugs no in case na magkaroon po ng uh, anaphylaxis or hemodynamic instability yung pasyente biglang bumagsak yung blood pressure or biglang mahirapang huminga Okay? So these are the things that can be can be done, ano, if there is on-site, no? Okay, side effect. Okay? Now this slide just shows to us, no, what are the usual materials that should be available at the vaccination site, no? Aside from the medications that are previously uh, mentioned, no, in the in the other slide po. Okay? Now, now after this, so uh, alis ka na, lalabas ka na, no? So nabakunahan ka na, so uuwi ka na ng bahay, okay? Now, what will you do now, no? After you have been vaccinated at saka umuwi ka ng bahay. So first thing first, no? Syempre kapag alam po natin na babakunahan tayo, di dapat medyo light na po, no, yung gagawin na natin, okay? Make sure that you plan, no, the vaccination day 
and as much as possible, dapat wala ka ng prior engagement, wala ka ng mga subsequent engagement. No? Wala ng date, wala ng mga dinner, wala na, hindi ka napupunta ng office. Kasi just to share my experience po, no? when I had my first job of the Sinovac, no? or, or dapat yata hindi ko na sinabi yung, yung, ano, no? o yung uh, brand or yung type, no? para po ako nagkaroon ng covid ano pong ibig sabihin ano so during my first after my first job po as in sobrang ambigat po ng braso ko hindi ko po siya mataas no tapos uh, iba po talaga yung pakiramdam nung nung braso no na nabakunahan and then i have this parang warm feeling na parang flash feeling tapos when i went home bahing ako ng bahing bahing ako ng bahing tapos sa uh, tumutulo po yung sipon ko no so all the while i thought baka nako na covid yata ako but according to our allergologist that is a common no effect no of uh, the vaccine okay and then uh, again ano sabi nga natin sabi, uh, we have to be prepared so for us to be prepared dapat alam natin ano ba yung mga common side effects no na pwede nating maramdaman after the first job so sabi nga natin you may have slight fever, chills, headache, no, fatigability, no. So myalgia, all of these are part, no, of our reactogenicity, no, to the vaccine. Now, uh, what can we advise or what can we do, no, in in order to to lessen this discomfort? So, pwede po na nating sabihin dun sa pasyente na okay, uh, pwede kang uminom na ng paracetamol, pag-uwi mo ng bahay pwede ka nang uh, uminom ng pain reliever or analgesic no or pwede kang maglagay ng cold compress no dun sa site na nabakunahan ka para hindi naman siya masyadong uh, masakit no so uh, these are preparation no that you must be aware para lang po malessen yung discomfort po after the vaccination so part of the recommendation is to drink a lot of fluid no and yun nga uh, yung tinatawag na bakuna dress no alam niyo po ba yung bakuna dress or yung bakuna blouse na kung saan naka-open na po yung uh, ating uh, arm no okay and ready to be uh, to be vaccinated po no on the the day itself okay so very important po na alam natin yung mga may expect natin na mararamdaman and what are the things that we should do no in 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 case maramdaman po natin okay so when do you uh, contact no or when when do you um, call your doctor no after you have been vaccinated so actually depende na po yan ano doon sa magiging manifestation so in case na uh, nagkaroon ka ng shortness of breath no na, uh, yun na nahirapan kang huminga uh, nag-flash po kayo no parang iba iba na yung pakiramdam no okay and then uh, parang feeling ninyo nagkakaroon kayo ng paninikip ng dibdib or nahihirapang huminga no those are the situations or conditions wherein you need to to already call your doctor no okay to have your consult kasi mahirap na pong sabihin na these are just uh, simple no uh, reactogenicity to the covid vaccine okay so but then kung alam naman natin na pwede tayong magkaroon ng konting uh, sneezing, konting uh, runny nose, myalgia, no? These are just uh, uh, mild side effect. Pero ang hindi po kasama ay yung mawalan ka ng panlasa, ha? At mawalan ka ng pangamoy. Kasi actually po, no, just to share it with you, no? Meron po kaming mga nabakunahan, no? Na after two days, nagkaroon po sila ng loss of smell, loss of taste, and when we had their swab done, they turned out to be positive. Okay? kasi nga ito po yung mga tip, uh, typical na asymptomatic no na carrier na na pag tinanong mo sa screening no walang symptoms pero nung pala they are carrier tapos nagkataon na when they had this uh, vaccine nagkaroon sila ng mild signs and symptoms pero may kasamang anosmia tsaka dysgusia which is not a common manifestation for uh, reactogenicity so we had them swab and it turned out na they are positive pala. So, COVID-19 sila, no? Okay? pag ganon. Okay? So, again, this slide, no, will show the different um, allergic reactions, no, or adverse events and what can be done, no, okay, in order to at least alleviate, no, the, the signs and symptoms. So, very important po na alam natin to lahat, no, before we receive our vaccines. Okay? Now, 
what if we don't get this side effect? So, ibig sabihin, parang nung nabakunahan ka, wala lang, parang wala lang. Meron pong mga ganun eh, no? So, ibig po bang sabihin, hindi po naging effective sa atin yung bakuna? Okay? So, the answer here is no. Okay? Many people will get the vaccine and will have no side effects po. So, that kung walang side effect, no, hindi po ibig sabihin ay hindi naging effective or hindi nag-work sa kanila yung vaccine. Okay? So ulitin ko po, hindi lahat po ng pasyente or individual na nabakunahan, ina-expect nyo po na magkakaroon kayo ng mild discomfort. Kasi meron din po na mga nabakunahan na parang wala lang. No? Parang uh, wala silang naramdaman. But then hindi mo masasabi no? na hindi effective sa kanila yung bakuna. Okay? Now another important question po. No? Okay. How long do I need to wait before getting no the COVID vaccine in case po na nabakunahan ako no ng ibang klasing vaccine so example nagka nagpa shot ka or nagpabakuna ka ng influenza no or nagpabakuna ka ng pneumococcal vaccine no so ang recommendation po is at least wait for 14 days no so there should be a minimum interval of 14 days between administration of covid-19 vaccine and any other vaccine against other conditions regardless of order no okay so that um you will be able to monitor no okay yung naging effect at saka yung naging uh, kung nagkaroon man ikaw ng adverse event or adverse effect no from these vaccines kasi po ang problema wala pa po tayong available data no okay on co-administration of this covid vaccine with other available vaccines okay now, is it okay to get different types of COVID vaccine? Okay. So, ibig sabihin, uh, first shot ko, Sinovac. Then, I decide na ang second dose ko ay AstraZeneca. Pwede po ba yun? So, actually, the advice is no po. No? Okay. So, that vaccine brands are not interchangeable no, at this time. And wala pa po tayong available data whether pwede po bang gawin ito or hindi. Okay? But again, no, sabi nga nila, if you had uh, hypersensitivity on the first dose, syempre automatic, no? hindi ka na pwedeng tumanggap ng second dose. So, ibig po bang sabihin, hindi ka na pwedeng magbakuna ng iba pang brand? Remember po na ang bakuna natin, it comes into different platforms. No? Marami po siyang klase ng bakuna. No? So that, again, sabi nga natin, if you have hypersensitivity reaction, you just have to consult your allergologist para mag-guide po kayo and masabihan po kayo no? kung anong preparation in case you will receive another type of vaccine. No? So again, pag nag-receive kayo ng another vaccine, it will be considered as first dose ulit. No? Kasi hindi nyo na po pwedeng tanggapin yung second dose no? nung type of vaccine na nagkaroon kayo ng prior hypersensitivity reaction. Okay? Now, second, uh, next question is, no? okay, pwede po bang mabakunahan yung mga pregnant patient or pregnant uh, uh, individuals? No? Okay, so ang, ang pinaka-safe po na sagot ko dyan is first and foremost, kung buntis po siya, you have to secure no the advice of their uh, obstetrician no pinaka importante po yan lalo na no lalo na kung ang babakunahan ay nasa first trimester so ano pong ibig sabihin noon yung nasa first stage of uh, fetal development kasi yung first trimester po ito po yung 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 months no wherein nagde-develop pa lang po yung bata. E remember, may platform po ng vaccine na may subunits ng DNA and RNA. No? Actually, wala pa po tayong malalaking uh, studies about it, no? pero sabi nga nila, uh, it is better no, to seek the advice and uh, to get no uh, um yun nga, to get a, 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 a consult no? okay, from your um uh, obstetrician okay so who no uh, does not recommend vaccinating pregnant women ano, at this time no since there are very limited data on the effect of vaccine on pregnant women and their babies okay 
Although it is important to emphasize that these vaccines are not live vaccines. No? So, hindi naman po sila live virus that can be teratogenic. Okay. However, since pregnant mothers at are higher risk for severe COVID than non-pregnant, okay, selected pregnant women are at, who are at high risk for getting infected or have severe complications may be given the vaccine. Okay, so that ito po yung tinatawag na we uh, weigh no, the benefit out of the risk. So example po ng situation is that a pregnant uh, healthcare worker. Okay, so being a healthcare worker, alam natin na constantly exposed po siya sa COVID-19. So that the recommendation is that if this healthcare worker is constantly exposed no, to COVID infection, then most likely, if you weigh the benefit against the risk, baka mas maganda no, na ibakuna mo na lang or, or bakunahan na lang siya no, kesa hindi siya mabigyan ng vaccine. No? So medyo gray area po po no, yung vaccination among pregnant patients po. Okay. Now what about breastfeeding mothers? No? Pwede po ba silang mabakunahan? So ang sagot po natin diyan ay yes, no? But then again, sabi nga natin, no, you have to discuss this, okay, with your doctor, okay? Since WHO says that breastfeeding, no, offers substantial health benefits to lactating women and their breastfed children, okay? The efficacy of the vaccine is expected to be similar in lactating women as in other adults, okay? And although there is limited data, no, since the vaccine is not a live virus, this is unlikely to pose a risk to the breastfeeding child. Okay, so that a lactating woman who is part of a group recommended for vaccination. So, babalik ko po ulit yung example ko. A lactating mother who is also a frontliner or a healthcare worker, actually, again, iwiwi mo po yung benefit against the risk. Okay, so my, my answer is uh, considering na frontliner siya, highly exposed siya, then my recommendation is still uh, pabakuna siya no? kahit na nagbe-breastfeeding po siya. Okay, so that this uh, uh, healthcare workers who are lactating or breastfeeding should receive no? okay, COVID-19 vaccines. Okay. Now, is it advised or advisable no, to discontinue breastfeeding after you receive vaccination? Ang sagot po ay hindi. Okay? So again, this is not a live no, vaccines or virus. No? So therefore, pwede po nating ituloy yung pagpa-breastfeed no, if they're after receiving these vaccines. Okay? Now, what about the immunocompromised no? okay, patients? Are, are they uh, eligible no, to receive these vaccines? Again, the answer is yes, no, unless with contraindications. So what are these contraindications? So, syempre, those immunocompromised patients with severe allergy no, to the vaccine component, those patients with history of severe allergy to any vaccine or injectable medication, Okay, so ibig sabihin po, kung may mga prior history po kayo ng ganito, then ang recommendation is that you should not receive no, the vaccine unless no, you are properly cleared and assessed by your own physician and you were given clearance po to receive this vaccine. Okay, so it is recommended that individuals with immunocompromised no, state, okay, should discuss their situation or condition to their attending doctors before they receive any type of vaccine. Okay. So who else? No? Okay, so those patients who are immunocompromised, okay, so yung sabi nga natin, uh, yung mga nag uh, kikimotherapy, yung may mga uh, chronic diseases no, that at a higher risk no, to develop COVID-19. So, ang advice po dyan is kung stable, no? again, I will repeat, kung stable yung kanilang chronic condition, then with the clearance of their doctors, they can receive no? okay, these vaccines. Okay? So, again, you have to discuss the benefit against the risk no? with your doctor. Okay? 
Kasi nga ang problema nga po since bago po lahat ito sa atin, no? There is uh, insufficient data, no? That we can use as evidence, no? For our answer. Okay? Now what about cancer patients? Pwede po ba silang mabakunahan? Ang sagot po natin diyan ay yes, no? Cancer patients are at high risk no for worse outcome so nung ibig kong sabihin sila po ay kasama dun sa mga immunocompromised patient no and once they get infected with covid no okay sila po yung common individuals na namamatay sila po yung na ICU no and they usually have at least no one severe complication kasi remember po ang cancer is a hypercoagulable state and sabi nga natin isang common cause of mortality no okay sa covid is yung blood clots no so pwede po silang magkaroon ng pulmonary embolism or cerebrovascular stroke no that can cause the death no of this uh, cancer patient okay so what are the general general recommendations on vaccinations of very immunocompromised patient okay so severe immunosuppression is expected no in patients with leukemia lymphoma generalized malignancy or therapy no with alkalinating agents antimetabolites radiation or large amount of corticosteroids so ano pong recommendation dito they should not receive any live or live attenuated virus or vaccine. Now, when, when cancer chemotherapy or immunosuppressive therapy is being considered, vaccination ideally should precede the initiation of chemotherapy or immunosuppression by greater than or equal to two weeks. So at least meron pong pagitan ng two weeks. No? So in general, vaccination during chemotherapy or radiation therapy should be avoided because antibody responses are suboptimal. So natatandaan nyo po yung slide ko kanina na how does vaccine works. No? Naalala nyo po yung antigen presenting cell, yung CD4, CD8. ba diba? sabi nga natin, we have to activate our uh, immune system para makapag-generate tayo ng neutralizing antibodies. Eh kung immunocompromised ka, and then you will be receiving this uh, chemotherapeutic or radiation therapy, no? suboptimal po yung uh, activity ng ating immune system and therefore baka hindi tayo makapag-elicit no? ng enough neutralizing antibodies. Okay? So that patients vaccinated while on immunosuppressive therapy or those no who are to receive no any chemotherapeutic uh, drugs should not be immunized no or should not be vaccinated for at least no okay, 3 months okay so ang recommendation po nila is palakasin po muna natin yung immune system natin no before we get vaccinated okay now what about people receiving uh, steroids no yung mga naka-prednisone, corticosteroids, naka-dexamethasone po, no? Uh, do we still encourage them to be vaccinated? Ang sagot po ay yes, no? Okay, high doses of steroid, no? Although high doses of steroid may reduce a person's response to the vaccine, no? Yun naman pong mga common tablets no, na steroids natin are sub-physiologic or they just induce no, minimal uh, suppression no, or an, an anti-inflammatory effect. So hindi po siya masyadong makaka-inhibit ng immune response. But again, ano, for those who are taking uh, steroids for a quite a, uh, kumbaga, a longer period, then ang advice pa rin po natin is that they should consult no their uh, physician or their attending doctor okay now what about those with autoimmune disease no okay do do they still uh, or do we recommend no that they uh, be vaccinated ang sagot pa rin po is yes no unless there is other contraindication and in most cases nga ang contraindication natin ay allergies no, from the substance or materials that are related to the vaccine component. Po. Okay? So that persons with autoimmune condi conditions who are not no, allergic no, to the subunit or component of the vaccine may receive this COVID-19 vaccine. 
Now, what about patients no? with HIV? Okay, pwede po ba natin silang bakunahan? Okay, so the answer here is it depends. No? Okay, so that uh, ang gusto natin is ipa CD4 count po muna natin sila no? to, to determine no, the immune uh, state of the patient. Kasi pag uh, ang CD4 level po nila ay less than 200, then it means that they are not immunocompetent or they are immunocompromised and therefore suboptimal ulit no yung ability ng body to uh, produce no our neutralizing antibody so therefore baka hindi po maging effective sa kanila no yung ating covid-19 vaccine okay however no kung ang cd4 count po nila ay more than 200 no then Again, ang respond po natin dyan or ang advice natin is una, you have to uh, secure no clearance from your doctor no and uh, get advice from them no whether is it safe to be uh, vaccinated now or not. But in general population, do you need to be screened out for HIV? No, no. Hindi po natin kailang magpa HIV screening before we have our Okay, vaccine administration. So, hindi po siya kailangan. Okay? Now, how about patients who are receiving anticoagulants or antiplatelets? So, common question po ito dun sa mga nagre-receive ng AstraZeneca before, no? Kasi I, I, I know you have heard, no? Na ang isang naging uh, scenario ngayon sa AstraZeneca and why at a certain point na ban po no yung paggamit ng AstraZeneca is because of the incidence of thrombosis no now uh, ang tanong po is that uh, are these patients using anticoagulants no okay are they allowed to use uh, to be vaccinated the answer po is still yes no kasi ang danger lang naman po kasi kung makikita niyo po kasi yung vaccine they are given intramuscularly so medyo malalim po siya no so ang tendency po it has to be properly pressed no okay after the uh, job or after the inoculation so that ma minimize po natin yung bleeding no now for those taking no yung mga coumadin uh, on low molecular weight heparin baka it is advisable no na they should have a a baseline no monitoring of their bleeding parameter okay so yung mga prothrombin time no okay at least malaman po natin ano in order for us to to see ano ba yung tendency na magkakahematoma sila or magdudugo sila no after they receive no the inoculation so ang recommendation po is that the area where the vaccine is inoculated it must be firmly pressed okay and no okay the, the, the duration should be at least two minutes po. So, wag magmadali no? sa pag-press ng area where the vaccination was given para malimit po natin or ma-minimize natin yung bleeding. Okay? So, uh, can patients with comorbidities get vaccinated no? even if they are not yet uh, senior citizen? Kasi common po yan, di ba? At age 45, at age 50, meron pong ano, High blood, diabetes, may asthma, may rayuma. Di po ba yung parang individual na lahat, kinuha na niya lahat ng sakit. No? So ang tanong, pwede ba silang mabakunahan? Okay? Ang sagot po dyan is pwede po. No? Okay? As long as the chronic condition or the comorbidities are well controlled and no, once they had seek the guidance and clearance from their doctors. Like katulad po ng mga pasyente namin, ano? yung mga pasyente ko po na nagdadialysis. No? So they, I have been receiving texts and call, me, call from my patients na, Doktora, pwede ba kami magpabakuna? Nagdadialysis po kami. Or Doktora, may diabetes po ako. No? Okay, pwede po ba kami magpabakuna? My answer is yes. The more na kailangan mong magpabakuna. Bakit? Kasi may comorbidity ka. You belong to the vulnerable age group. At kung titingnan po natin doon sa prioritization, nasa category A po sila, no? Okay, ng prioritization. So that since may comorbidities po sila, then they have to receive, no? These vaccines, okay? So na mention ko lang po, no? Yung mga 
uh, comorbidities, no? Like cancer, chronic kidney disease, COPD, Down syndrome, heart condition, immunocompromised state, obesity, those with sickle cell disease, smoking, diabetes, no? Actually, they have to be vaccinated po, no? Kasi it lessens, sabi nga natin, di ba? Ang objective mo na lang dito is not not the 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 the, the parang not the possibility of being infected eh. Kasi kahit na mabakunahan ka, you can still be infected. That's a common knowledge talaga. It should be the understanding. Kahit na mabakunahan po kayo, pwede pa rin, pa, pwede pa rin po kayong magkaroon ng COVID. Pero kapag nabakunahan po kayo, it lessens the severity of your manifestation. So, ibig sabihin, pag nabakunahan ka, yung chances na mamamatay ka sa COVID, it lessens po. Actually, for some uh, vaccines, like uh, if I'm not mistaken, for Sinovac, no? you decrease the moderate, uh, moderate type of illness by as much as 50 to 60%. Pero for severe and critical, almost 100% po no? na nalilesen niya. And the same is true with AstraZeneca. Okay? So again, you will not um, avoid no? being infected, pero you minimize the severity of the infection. Okay? So yun po yung gusto natin ano, na iparating. Okay? So can patients, no? okay, uh, again, can patients with chronic condition or chronic infection get vaccinated? So ito naman yung may mga chronic tuberculosis. No? So yung bang may mga TB, pwede po ba silang uh, mabakunahan? Then the the question the answer is still yes no okay unless there is contraindication so persons who are being treated for chronic infections like TB no tuberculosis can still be vaccinated these patients must continue continuously take their medications on our antibiotic no before uh, first or in between no the first and the second doses okay now persons no who will come to the vaccination sites no with acute fever, so you may mga symptoms naman, no? may fever, or currently being treated for a current no, acute infection, like you may mga pneumonia, dengue, no? we discourage them no, from having uh, this vaccination. And sabi nga natin, at least 14 days no, na asymptomatic ka. Kahit po doon sa mga na COVID, tapos gusto nilang magkuha ng second dose, we usually ask them, kumplitohin niyo po muna yung two weeks niyo na quarantine. No? Then after completion ng two weeks na quarantine, you wait for another two weeks before you get the second dose of your vaccine. No? So at least nandun pa rin po tayo sa 28 days no? after the first and second dose po. Okay? So can a person with active COVID-19 infection no? get injected with the vaccine? So ang sagot po natin is, not right away. So sabi nga natin, no, we have to wait for at least no, okay, 14 days no, before you get your, your vaccine. Okay? So those patients na moderate to mild to moderate COVID, ang usual quarantine period po niyan ay 14 days. No? And sabi nga natin, after 14 days, maghintay ka pa ng another 14 days before you get your vaccine. Now, for the critical, no, yung severe critical, the quarantine period po is 21 days. So that after 21 days, you again uh, wait for another two weeks or 14 days because, before you can receive no, your vaccine no, or the, the second dose of your vaccine. Okay? So very important po yan kasi hindi po agad-agad after ninyong lumabas ng isolation room or quarantine, no? Kay, kaila, pwede nyo nang uh, tanggapin ano, yung uh, inyong uh, vaccine, no? Whether first or second dose, okay? Should the person, no? Who had COVID-19 in the past still get vaccinated? Actually, dapat po. Kasi sabi nga natin, no? Okay, yung pagkakaroon ng bakuna, it does not give you 100% assurance na hindi ka na magkaka-COVID. Ang iniiwasan lang po natin sa pag uh, sa pagbabakuna is yung mortality no and yung severity ng manifestation. So the recommendation is that kahit na nagka-covid ka pa before, you still have to be 
vaccinated po. Okay? So, in summary, okay, who should not get vaccinated? So, ulitin ko lang. Yung hindi lang po dapat mabakunahan ay yung may direct allergy sa components ng vaccine. Okay? So, ulitin ko. Ang hindi lang dapat mabakunahan ay yung may mga direct allergy sa components ng vaccine. And I have mentioned some of these components. Pero yung may mga allergy sa pagkain, sa gamot, or to any other substance or material na hindi directly related sa component ng vaccine, pwede pa rin po silang mabakunahan. But ang recommendation is you have to consult your allergologist you have to be well educated as to what are the expected adverse events so that if in case this adverse events or adverse effect no okay may be manifested at least alam niyo po kung anong gagawin ninyo in case okay so that very important po no na uh, matutunan lang natin or ma-educate lang natin yung sarili natin about this vaccine. No? Kasi yun po ang mahirap. Eh. Kasi kung marami tayong kontra no? or maraming mga tao na ayaw magpabakuna, hindi po natin maa-address yung 70%. And kapag hindi natin na-achieve yung 70%, hindi po natin makukuha yung tinatawag na herd immunity, which is the objective of our government in order for us to at least somehow, no? hopefully, eradicate COVID-19 infection po like what we did with smallpox. Now, case-to-case -case basis naman po no? for some other conditions like yung pregnancy po, lactating mothers. No? So pag sinabi natin na they are healthcare workers, no? it would be advisable, no? weighing the benefit against the risk, it would be advisable for them to receive no? vaccines. Okay? Kung sakali po that they are at high risk no, to be constantly exposed to COVID-19 patients po. Okay? So in summary, no, again, sabi nga natin, very important po na uh, anyone, no, anyone who had previous uh, uh, allergies, magpakonsulta po sila sa doktor nila. No? They have to be monitored longer okay? for... Uh, kumbaga, let's say, kung normally 15 minutes lang to 30 minutes lang yung post-vaccination monitoring, kapag may history ka ng allergy, then ibig sabihin, you have to be monitored longer. No? So, 60 minutes to 1 hour. Okay? So, uh, you have to, to emphasize no, to those uh, patients na kahit po na exposed po kayo, kahit po nagkaroon kayo ng, ng prior uh, infection na ng COVID-19, you still have to be vaccinated because it minimizes the severity of the infection and it doesn't it does not totally eradicate no the chances of being infected po. okay so final message we are trying to fight no this covid pandemic okay so we have uh, used no several uh, uh, protocols no we have used uh, several policies, no, nag nag uh, revise, nag adapt, no, nag nag change tayo ng napakadaming uh, protocols and policies, no, and yet nakikita pa rin po natin yung surge, no, ng COVID, and it is uh, talagang nakaka it really pains us, no, as health uh, practitioners po na to matawag yung pasyente, nagigingalo, nagmamakawa yung kamag-anak, kasi Doktor, naikot na po namin yung napakadaming hospital sa Metro Manila and yet wala po kaming uh, mapagdalhan sa mga mahal namin sa buhay. No? Nakakaiyak po na maririnig namin na may mga pasyente kaming kilala, no? na matagal ko ng pasyente. No? Actually, isa sa mga na malaking naapektuhan po talaga nitong COVID pandemic ay yung mga dialysis patients namin. No? Uh, marami po akong pasyente na namatay no? sa tent lang. No? yung iba namatay daw sa ilalim ng puno no namatay sa tricycle no namatay sa sasakyan habang isinusugod po no sa hospital and yung iba nga po hindi na nakakarating sa hospital so very important po na we have to emphasize the importance of being vaccinated kasi ang objective nga po is uh, magkaroon po tayo ng herd immunity. No? And for us to have this herd immunity, kailangan pong ma-reach natin yung 70%
na uh, vaccination for the population. Okay? Now, uh, we, just, we just also would like to emphasize na lahat po nitong vaccine na to ay nasa phase 3 clinical trial and they are being used under the emergency authorization of FDA. But again, sabi nga natin, are they safe? Then actually, no, uh, safety and efficacy proven naman po yan. No? Kasi hindi naman siguro igogo yan ng government at hindi naman yan igogo ng FDA kung meron po silang mga evidences that are not leaning towards safety no? and efficacy. So ang gusto lang natin is maprotektahan natin. So uulitin ko po, no? pag nabakunahan ka, may chance pa rin po na ikaw ay magkaroon ng ng bak ng uh, covid no but the thing is uh, at least no yung severity po ng ng covid infection hindi na po ganun kalala no as compared to those who were not vaccinated okay so gusto po nating i-emphasize na uh, for 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 most of us no gusto nating malaman na uh, the only way to fight this is for us to be vaccinated. No? So for us to be vaccinated together with the other no? okay, basic policies or protocols that we are already adapting. So these are the basic preventive measures that we are also, that we are already practicing right now. No? Yung mga physical distancing, wearing mask, hand washing. We've been using this. Pero from, from March of 2020, Actually po, no, yung mukha ko po sobrang na-deform na nga po yata to kaka-wear ka, 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 ng mga na, mas, no? Starting from doon sa uh, 3M na um, face, face mask na para kaming mga Star Wars, no? Yung may mga ganyan, ano? Tapos full mask pa po. Hanggang sa nag-evolve nag na po kami dito sa uh, N95, uh, Wala po eh, no? Talagang kahit na naka-level 4 kami ng PPE, no? Pag pumapasok po kami sa COVID ward, talagang uh, nagkakaroon pa rin po, ano? At a certain point po, nagkakaroon ng break sa protocol and nagkakaroon po ng infection. So, regardless of whether we we 100% adhere to this, ang problema po nagkakaroon pa rin po ng ng infection. So, ang pinakamahalaga po siguro nating dapat i-emphasize is una, lahat po tayo ay magpabakuna, no? So, lahat po sana ng may agam-agam pa, lahat po ng mayroong mga doubts, no? Okay, sa pagbabakuna, sana po uh, as soon as possible po, no? Ma-resolve po ninyo itong mga uh, worries ninyo, questions ninyo, no? So that ma-encourage po sana namin kayo na magpabakuna. Kasi sabi nga natin, uh, the only, the best uh, vaccine is what is available. So kung Sinovac yan, Sinovac, no? Kung AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca. Swerte po tayo kung dumating na ang Pfizer, no? Or yung Moderna, no? But the thing is, ito yung available, eh. Okay? Uh, ito na yung available. So we have no choice. And, and mind you po, no? Ito pong vaccine na to, hindi lang po one time yan. Hindi lang siya ngayong year na to, no? We will be receiving this vaccine yearly, just like our influenza vaccine, okay? So, I think with that, no, I I would just want to share lang, no, some of our pictures. So, actually po, I am the medical director of UST Hospital, no? And I just want to share how we rolled out our vaccines no? uh, as the mandated by DOH. So we started with our ceremonial vaccination last uh, March 7. So kami po yan, ano? mga braso po namin ang unang napain ano? na mabakunahan. And then we have this uh, vaccination team or task force. No? So uh, ayan po kami, ako po yung aming CEO, yung assistant medical director at saka yung aking uh, kasamahan po si Dr. Raporto no? which is the director for uh, administration. Then we have created this logistic po no? in, in our vaccination. So actually with the vaccination po, we created no, at least five stations po. We have the registration, the counseling, and the consent area. We have the screening area. 
Then we have the vaccination and the documentation where we give the ID. And then we have the post-monitoring area. So ito pong nakikita ninyo, ito po yung aming uh, registration area. So these are our nurse supervisors. Okay, and then this is the late, the, 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 kumbaga yung uh, waiting area, no? While they are waiting for the registration. So ito po yun, no? Okay, then we have the uh, counseling and yung pagsasign ng informed consent kasi we have to explain, no? Na, na, ikaw ba to? Nabasa mo ba to? May question po ka ba? Or meron ka bang gustong i-clarify, no? With regards to the vaccine. Then after you had this uh, consent no, signing, you will go straight to the screening wherein kukuha ng ka ng vital signs. No? Itatanong, uh, tatanungin ka kung may mga signs and symptoms ka. No? And then um, you will be asked about uh, latest uh, or recent no, uh, history of uh, COVID or uh, whether nag-receive ka ba ng vaccines no, for the last uh, two weeks. Okay? Then after the screening, you go straight to the vaccination area. So ito po yun. Ano? Meron kaming tatlong inoculators. Meron po kaming clinical pharmacists. So yung clinical pharmacists po namin, sila po yung talagang nag-aspirate no? ng aming mga bakuna to make sure na walang matatapon, walang masasayang. At we are giving the exact dose of the vaccine. Now ito po yung aming ref. No? Kasi uh, I think this time we are giving... Sinovac. So ang kailangan lang ng Sinovac ay 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. So parang nasa freezer lang po siya. And we have this temperature monitor. No? Kasi very important po kasi ang maintenance ng cold chain no? in maintaining the potency of our vaccine. Okay? Then we have this monitoring. So after you had your uh, vaccination, so take note po, meron kaming bed no? na nakalagay dito in case someone will have an adverse uh, effect. No? Okay, and then we have the e-card or the crash card. No, meron din po kami mga gamit dito that in case mahirap ang huminga, kailang intubate. No, meron din po kami oxygen tank na in case kailangan po ng ng oxygenation. No, meron po kami na ready. And this are the department heads. No, sila po yung naging unang kliente namin ano sa bakuna. Okay, so with that, thank you very much po. I just would like to mention, no, no, Dr. Regina Berba. She's a infectious consultant of UPPGH. No, she had helped me out in the preparation of my slides. Thank you very much po. Thank you, Dr. Consolacion. Um, just a minute. Can you you want to do the stop share first? So. Okay. Thank you. That was a really, really super comprehensive overview of the entire yeah. COVID situation. <laughs> From detection to cure to vaccines and post vaccines. Um, that was that was really that was great. Um, I think we have we have quite a few questions now. I'm just looking. There's there's a there's a theme for the questions now. They're asking, for example, if you take the if you had the two Sinovac jabs, how soon after the last, the second injection, can you get another vaccine, another brand, or something? because you know there's something that came out in the news recently where the where China's own um, CDC personnel, or I, I can't remember his position, who said that he admitted that the Sinovac vaccine was quite weak. So, you know, um, so obviously we're all taking, I mean, a lot of people are taking Sinovac. So there's a little bit of, you know, um, fear right now that it's not enough protection, even if that's the only one available. Um, actually, ma'am, you know, it's very difficult for me to answer that question because this is just a recent news po. So, wala pa po tayong data as to how soon, kasi ibig pong sabihin, ma'am, they were, able to complete na, no, the first and the second dose of Sinovac, and yeah. yet they still would want to, to be vaccinated with another type of vaccine. Let's say, for example, they would want to receive this time AstraZeneca naman. Tama, yeah. tama po ba? Uh, wala pa po kasi tayong data no, about this. So I, I don't want to uh, give a, kumbaga, a, an answer without any basis. So 
um, I, I I still don't know how to answer to answer that question, ma'am, because we have no data about it. Because, for example, as you may have heard, there are people who we've people have been allowed to order privately, like right, through through private companies. So there's supposedly a batch of Moderna coming in towards June, July. Um, we're all expecting it around then. So let's say you take the Sinovac now, and then let's say your second your second job is early May or something. So by June, July, is it too soon? There's just not enough data to, to say at the moment. For oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry, ma'am. I cannot answer that question for now kasi wala pa nga po tayong data. Kasi uh, as uh, mentioned po, no, uh, ang premise po kasi is uh, after the second dose, you should be starting to produce your neutralizing antibodies and uh, I not I'm not so sure lang as to how uh, soon enough no you can be protected. Pero uh, with regards to the changing of vaccine no and how soon can you change your vaccine or shift to another type of vaccine? Wala po si tayo yung enough data for this no at uh, parang wala pa pong gumagawa kaya wala tayong data. But you foresee us or even the health experts say we'll be living with COVID for quite a while, right? It will take a while for the entire world to achieve that level of herd immunity. For example, India is having a lot of problems. There's a big surge in India now, right? And that's, you're talking about a huge population mm -hmm. or even China actually achieving, they've, they've already vaccinated, I think a hundred million people in China, but China's like more than a billion people. So it'll take a while to get everyone there. Do you think that boosters, like a yearly COVID vaccine is going to be part of our I think that's uh, the direction that we're looking at, ma'am. No? Kaya nga po, ang iniisip is that if, let's say, you're not satisfied or you're not happy with the Sinovac vaccine, then the following year, you can uh, receive another type of vaccine. That's that's sort of the common wisdom now yes. that's Opo. being um, yes, po. put forward. Okay, now, um, I about the Sinovac, someone was saying... Is it coincidental that only the health workers who got Sinovac turned out positive and some even had serious conditions? Or would they have had COVID, like you said, asymptomatic without knowing and it only, they only presented themselves after the vaccine? Um, kasi nga ma'am, di po ba, ang premise kasi natin is uh, you don't uh, immediately start no, producing neutralizing antibodies even after the first dose. It is actually the completed dose or the, kumbaga yung pag jump start niya. Kasi there's a study being conducted in one hospital we have right now. Um, wherein they, they start uh, detecting the formation of neutralizing antibody after the first and the second dose. And nakikita po nga nila na uh, medyo mabagal no? yung pagtaas ng antibody. So malaki po talaga yung possibility na even after you, you completed the dose or even after you received the first dose, pwede ka pa rin magkaroon ng, ng uh, COVID, no? Kasi sabi nga po natin, even though you complete, no? you complete the first and second dose, it's not the question of being infected. Eh, no? There is a big possibility that you can still be infected. Pero ang point po is that, is the severity the same as compared to those who are not vaccinated compared to those who are vaccinated? So technically po, mas lesser yung complication, mas less yung severity for those who have received the vaccines as compared to those who have not received it. And then, well, a bit related to that, what about the PSG group that supposedly had the vaccine in December and then, you know, for the same reason now, they're all, they, several of them were tested negative recently. No, that's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Yun, yun nga po. De, uh, tsaka remember ma'am, the, the ability to produce neutralizing antibodies are still dependent on the immunocompetence of the individual. Yes. So, hindi natin totally mapepredict na after two months or after three months, you have a steady state of production of antibodies. Still dependent on how your body will react on the vaccine that was given to you. I also noticed in your presentation, you said that um, AstraZeneca doesn't have FDA approval. 
Pilipinas. Under ano po, under emergency utilization po. Um, Lahat po sila naka e, uh, EUA. All of them under EUA. Okay. Um, because there was a question here. Um, this about the suspension of AstraZeneca. How about those who already had their first dose and can't take the second dose because it was suspended for rollout to those below 60 years old? Um, actually, ma'am, from what I remember, you know, when we attended a, a meeting, no, um, they uh, closely associated this to those who have been taking oral contraceptive pills. Kasi nga po, di ba, for those uh, 60 below, ito yung mga reproductive age group pa. Kaya po nakita nyo po hindi siya binand or hindi siya na, na hold sa mga 60 years old and above. No? And yung situation ay na hold lang or yung pagbibigay ay na hold lang sa mga 60 below because they found a close association with oral contraceptive pills, lalo na sa babae. Kasi nga, di ba, remember that OCPs uh, in itself has a tendency to in Juice hyperviscosity or thrombosis. So combine it, combining it with AstraZeneca, it doubles now the chances of thrombosis. Kaya they recommend na, I, I, I'm not so sure, pero it's still under study. Wala pa naman pong direct na mandate from the OH that we totally stop it. But for the meantime, uh, it is not recommended for 60 below. Okay. Um Here's another particular case. I would like to ask for the case about my mother. She got infected with COVID symptomatic last March and fortunately now she's okay. She wants to be vaccinated. However, we are unsure if she needs to undergo any tests to determine presence of antibodies or is there a standard protocol? Isn't it, you have to wait two weeks at least until yeah, um, recovery? Yes po. Actually basing on the uh, quarantine requirement no kung moderate siya or critical uh, for moderate uh, I would repeat po 14 days of isolation for severe or critical it's 21 days. Then after you are done with your quarantine you have to add another 2 weeks no before you can receive either the first or the second dose of your vaccine. So let's say yung mom po niya nagkaroon ng covid ng March no. Wala po bang specific date kung kailan ng March? So let's say nagkaroon po siya ng March ng first week. So technically, kung March first week, so nag-isolate siya up to the second week of March. So that uh, ang, 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 ang assumption is okay na siya, na-complete na, na niya yung quarantine period niya. And then natapos niya yung two weeks no, na additional waiting period. So that by first week ng April or second week of April, pwede na po niyang matanggap yung first dose niya ng vaccine. Okay. Now, if a person but, but ma'am, if I may add, no. Uh syempre, ang, ang ang recommendation then is you have to undergo screening. Kaya nga po, before we give the the vaccine, they have to undergo screening process pa rin. Then sa screening process, we really, you know, tediously ask for the different signs and symptoms kasi minsan po kahit mild lang, uh kapag tinanong mo doon lang lalabas eh no hindi sila lahat voluntarily magbibigay ng ng signs yeah. and symptoms kaya very important din po that prior to the vaccination they will undergo screening po and then we have this phenomenon now of long term covid parang covid long haulers right they call yeah, it so yung people who've recovered swab. Mm -hmm. yes. swab, swab yeah. positive pa rin. yes po no not even but even if they're negative but they have still post covid symptoms like brain fog and you know all that so yeah, can they receive the vaccine yes po actually yes po kasi nga po uh, lalo na uh, very common po ito dun sa naka experience ng severe no severe to critical covid na nagrecover talagang uh, when you ask them yung talagang recovery period nila 
to the point na two months na, three months pa, parang bugbog pa rin daw po yung katawan nila, bigat pa rin, may, mahingalin pa rin po kasi sila, no? Because that's the, ano po eh, expected effect. Kasi their, their body, no, underwent so much trauma after being infected with COVID. So, magiging, uh, kumbaga yung manifestation is still very obvious. But the thing is, Uh, if we are to follow the guidelines nga po na once they have the 21 days quarantine period plus additional 14 days of being asymptomatic, ha? ang pinag-uusapan lang po natin sa asymptomatic ay yung mga influenza like uh, manifestations, no? then pwede po silang tumanggap ng vaccine. Kasi ang sabi nga natin, it is not the, the question of being in affected again but it is the question of uh, magpapabakuna ako kasi ayaw ko nang ma-experience ulit na maging severe or critical. Okay. And I have there's an interesting question here. Can a person Tara, what's your Yeah. Sorry. Oh, can I just ask this one question? Yeah. Sorry. The the vaccines and Yes, Miss Mabina. Go ahead, Pa. The vaccines and tattoos, is there any if there are tattoos on both sides of the arms? Does that affect where to that? I mean, that's an interesting question. I've never seen that before. Yes. Wala, wala naman po. Based on the mga guidelines, wala naman pong nakalagay na kapag may tattoo, bawal maglagay ng bakuna. Wala po. Uh, except po siguro kung fresh tattoo na, di po ba may, pag may pag fresh tattoo, mayroon pa pong mga parang fleshy na na wounds doon or yeah. what. But uh, if it's an, let's say, five years old na tattoo or yun talagang matagal na, baka naman po. Wala po sa guidelines, no? Na Only if it's, it's in the arm area, right? But if it's in another part of your body, that's okay. If you have a fresh tattoo uh, in another part of your body. Yes, opo. Akala ko po, since may tattoo ka sa braso, magpapa-inject ka sa puwet. Ganon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I mean, if, you're, if your tattoo is on your leg, for example, or your opo. back, Yes. You can still have the tattoo in your arm, right? Yeah. Wala naman po. Wala naman contraindication na let's say may tattoo ka na bawal ka magpabakuna. Wala naman po. Okay. Okay. Sarah, <laughs> did you want to say something? I think that was the yeah, but that was the issue because of a recent post by one of the mayors. Oh. Uh, because some people are sending photos of them having the vaccine uh, on their buttocks instead of the arms because of the presence of tattoo. But it's good to know that, yeah, it's good to know that it's not in the guidelines that yeah. we that tattoos are actually part of contraindication that you could do the jab in the arms. Well, <laughs> so know. one question for Doctora that's, uh, uh, that's uh, controversial right now would be the use of ivermectin and Lianhua. Lianhua? So, what's your standpoint, Doctor, about this uh, uh, I, treatments that some people are resorting? Um, actually, po, no, kasi ang ivermectin is known to us as an antiparasitic agent, po, no. And uh, for it to be effective, po, isabi nga nila yung human dose is medyo mataas, no. Uh, most ivermectin, uh, most ivermectin are used as animal uh, medicine. So I think it's not my position to to discuss or to talk, no. Because unang una po, I am not using it, and in the hospital po, we are not using it. Uh, so probably yun nga. Sorry, Mom Sarah, I am not in the position to answer it. Because I haven't used it, and I have no experience using it. No problem, Dr. Right. Thank you, Paul. It is one of the questions from the audience. <laughs> And there's some, um, it wasn't it used for horses? It's a horse medicine or something, right? Yeah, I think it's a medicine po that uh, is used no, for, for yeah. horses. But for people horses. have still been taking it and apparently you can't get it without a prescription now, but obviously there are doctors prescribing it as a, you know. Antiparasitic po. Yeah, but I, I, I actually have friends who say they, they, they're, they're taking it as a, precautionary, you know, measure. Uh, Hard, no? I mean, <laughs> you know, you know, oh, wait, kasi or whatever it's it's ginagamit sa hospital, ma'am. So I, as a doctor, I, I, unless na talagang may clear-cut guidelines no, sa paggamit yeah. po, 
it's the only time na once there is a clinical practice guideline that is already issued by let's say a society like uh, pag sinabi ng infectious uh, society uh, ivermectin is part of their algorithm protocol then baka po ano that 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 would be the time for for us to really have a a use for ivermectin but unless po talaga na wala pang clear cut guideline it's still uh, questionable po Okay. So, yeah, there's Thank you, Dr. Here. Um, if you have allergic rhinitis a few days after getting the first dose, you may experience some allergy episodes. Can that be correlated to the shot or is that, does that have environmental factors? Um, Actually, based po dun sa ating guidelines, kasi uh, it expected po kasi talaga na there would be mild signs and symptoms po after the vaccine. So together with the IPCC, no, siya po, sila po yung infection control natin sa hospital, we created a guideline that after vaccination, uh, those with signs and symptoms at least uh, 48 hours no, may still be attributed to the vaccine. Pero if the signs and symptoms persist beyond 48 hours, so kunyari yung, yung kanilang sipon, ubo, yung kanilang myalgia, yung parang masakit na kasukasuan, it persisted for more than 48 hours, then they will fall under the probable or suspected uh, uh, COVID po. So they have to undergo uh, swab. Uh, let me just, uh, this came from um, Dean Rowena um, Chua of the college, UST College of Nursing. Um, just a clarification. Uh, she says about uh, Ivermectin based on Merck, who's a producer of Ivermectin, um, there are no studies that support it currently at the moment. So like you were saying, the hospitals are very cautious about this. So that's probably the right, the right position to take, right? Wala pa po kasing ano eh, clinical practice guideline on its use. So uh, technically, hindi pa po namin siya ma-adapt because of that. What about the oral vaccine being developed by Father Ostriaco? I, I haven't, I heard about it, an oral vaccine, but I don't know what. I mean, there are not enough clinical trials, I would imagine, at this point, right? So it's hard it's to say. Very di difficult, ma'am, because actually uh, we are being recorded and this is uh, <laughs> something that has been, uh, baga, nakikita po, and I just don't want to be, ano po, na I am uh, uh, baga, advertising the use of it. Because <laughs> wala pa po talaga siyang ano, guidelines po. Okay, here's a particular case, 75-year-old senior citizen vaccinated with the first dose of AstraZeneca on the right thigh and experienced the following on the first day of post-injection, body malaise, myalgia on both arms for three days, and then one hematoma on the right arm. Will she be allowed to have a second dose of AstraZeneca? Actually po, pagka ganyan, remember po that um, I mentioned uh, post-vaccine reaction should only be expected uh, within 48 hours. So let's say uh, this uh, manifestation lasted for more than 48. So sa kaso po niya, di ba? I think it's already three days. So baka you have to uh, already seek advice from a doctor. Like for example po, questions of uh, is this patient taking anticoagulants or even antiplatelet? Meron po ba siyang iniinom na ganyan? Uh, kasi most of the time, knowing na elderly po ito, no, 70 plus, baka may mga blood thinners po sila na iniinom and that could probably had an interaction with the uh, AstraZeneca. I'm not saying na ito po talaga yun, ha? do not quote me po, but uh, just looking at the, the scenario na... Actually, it's not thrombosis. Eh. It's more of bleeding. Di po ba? Kasi nagka-hematoma po siya. And the hematoma was observed not on the site of injection kasi sa thigh po siya na-inject. No? And sabi nyo nga po, yung hematoma were observed on the arm. Yeah. So, this probably are not. No? Pwede po kasi silang hindi related dun sa bakuna. Okay? Hindi na siya related sa bakuna but must be investigated for, for some other reasons. Okay, and here's a question. Are there any drug-to-drug -drug interactions that we already know at this point in time? Um, 
That sounds a little too medical for me, so I don't know what that means. Drug, drug to drug interaction of what drugs for? It is quite general. Yeah. It's not indicated, Doctora. So they were just asking if there are any drug to drug interactions that were already noted with the use of the vaccines that we have for COVID. So far, wala pa po. Kaya, kaya nga po, uh, I, I have mentioned po that we belong to the clinical trial. Kaya for those without comorbidities, you are asked to do your daily monitoring for six months. And for those with comorbidities, one year. So kasama po tayo dun sa pinag-aaralan nila. Once we are get back. Are you talking back. about you in, in the USD hospital? You... No, the entire po, lahat. Uh, because some All people have said that they weren't given that, that report to report every day. Uh, or... Saan po kaya sila nakakuha ng bakuna? Actually, <laughs> po ba yan? <laughs> no, no, no. But I, I haven't heard that from any of my friends who've... Um, they were monitored after, for up to an hour after the sh they were given the shot. But I don't know if anyone who has to fill out something every day. I uh, I I don't know how to comment. Um, no po, no. But uh, in in a hospital setting, if you are to be vaccinated, like uh, here, no, in USD po, as an inoculation site po, uh, we usually uh, kumbaga, the monitoring is not. Uh, kumbaga limited immediately post vaccination ano yung aming monitoring sa kanila is extended up to the time na umuwi and then uh, up to the time na 6 months to 1 year depende po sa comorbidity and that's the same case po for DOH kaya po if i may share po no yung QR code po na yan uh, kapag sinagutan ninyo no and then uh, part of the information po kasi na na kinukuha doon is that they will ask you saan saan area ka na bakunahan let's say UST no anong na receive mong do, uh, uh, vaccine Sinovac first dose yes no anong signs and symptoms like a uh, uh, cough cold yeah no, no what particular time of the day ka nag uh, nag uh, nag monitor or nag uh, record no and then uh, this uh, informations po are feedback po doon sa sa receiving hospital. So meron po kaming uh, matatanggap na notification from DOH in case po na meron kaming isa sa mga nabakunahan namin na nagkaroon ng signs and symptoms na medyo severe, they will call our attention. Para kami naman on our part, uh, we will call no the the person or yung sa aming record ay nabakunahan na based on the information uh, sila po yung nagkaroon ng adverse event. Actually, that's supposed to be the, the monitoring na tinatawag. Hindi ko lang po masagot yung nabakunahan, tas after, wala na. Dapat hindi po ganun. That's not the normal yeah. uh, procedure. In some, uh, in some LGUs po, uh, they provide numbers or hotlines yeah. where you can contact just in case you would have uh, symptoms, signs and symptoms that you consider adverse effect of the vaccines. And in some LGUs naman for the same QR code that they generated for, for you to register would also be the same QR code that you would be reporting or that you would be uh, filling up the form for monitoring after the vaccination. It depends on the LGU. <laughs> That's another way of monitoring. Basta wag lang yung pagkatapos mong mag-inoculate mag, uh, or ma-vaccinate, wala na. Yeah. That could be another way po of monitoring. Okay, I think we have time for one last question. This is an interesting one. Talking about the, the, the vaccine trials that were all part of a vaccine trial. So in the case that we have allergic or adverse reactions, will the government shoulder all the hospital bills in, you know, incurred because of those adverse reactions being part of a clinical vaccine trial? Um, actually, dito po sa nakita naming rollout, uh, I just don't know how to answer it in relation to mga non-healthcare workers po. No? Kasi uh, automatic po kasi, uh, if you are vaccinated in the hospital and you are our employee, we report to DOH, let's say, for example, na you had this adverse event requiring admission and in most cases po, walang babayaran kasi empleyado po namin or healthcare worker namin. I'm not so sure lang how to answer it. Let's say you are a uh, in a corporate or in a in a company, no? And then you get vaccinated. Um, 
I don't know lang kung ang HMO, uh, if there's an, a provision in HMO that will uh, kumbaga allow you to use your HMO uh, privileges for admissions related to adverse events or adver adverse effect of uh, vaccination. Parang wala pa po yata. Meron na po bang ganun sa HMO? Parang wala pa po yata. I have no idea. Okay, just wala to round up the discussion. That's the reason po. Yeah, Sarah. Yeah, that's the reason for that we. That's that's the reason for. Uh, that's why this vaccination po is actually voluntary. We do not force anyone to to take the vaccine or to have the vaccine because uh, in there's a waiver that we that we signed for before we took the vaccine. Okay. What what did the waiver say? That the hospital. Yeah. The, uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> Not liable. Yeah, 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 the yeah, yes, so just, because just it's voluntary. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, just one last thing before I think that Sarah has something for you, but now, obviously, going towards normalizing life again, it, part of it is travel. So, when traveling to other countries, would you have any any directives as to whether the vaccination card issued by the LGU will be accepted? Uh, actually, very important po talaga kasi uh, I think uh, I, I just can't remember where I read it, no? Na part of your requirement na eventually if you go out no, from, from one country to another is to show your vaccination card. So, dapat po meron kang vaccination card. So, if I may show one vaccination card, no, I think I have mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sarah, you've had your shots also? Yes, my first shot, Miss Bambina. <laughs> yeah, if if you if I may show this, no, this is my vaccination card, no. So I received two doses already. So ang ang uh, instruction po sa amin is to keep this, take a picture of this, so that in case we will travel um, somewhere po na yun nga, that will require this, we can show this that we are already vaccinated po. So meron pong ganito and uh, you should not use uh, you should not lose this no until uh, such time na yun nga magkaroon na tayo ng valid na data as to the efficacy how how uh, frequent we have to be vaccinated mm -hmm. kasi mahirap na po dahil uh, pwede nga po itong maging yearly na na practice yeah. na sa atin yes opo okay on that note thank you so much Dr. Consolation this is Incredible, just the amount of information and so much to digest, but it was so thorough. So thank you, very helpful. Um, on behalf of Manila House, I'd like to thank you for everyone for joining us today. Um, this talk will be up on YouTube and probably tomorrow. So if you want to refer back to it, because there's a lot of information there. So I think it will do everyone good to keep referring back to it. Um, next week, we have our a webinar on um, Tuesday at 10 a.m., a webinar about um, anti-Asian hate, um, especially with all the events happening in the U.S. right now. So that's 10 a.m. Um, and it's also open to the public. Um, and Manila House is open for those who feel brave. We, we follow all the safety protocols. We have outdoor dining and we have expanded outdoor dining space as well to accommodate members uh, and their guests at, at any time. Um, if not, there's always our takeaway menu and we encourage you to, um, to call us to order or go online and you can also order online. So thank you from us and I'll turn you over to Sarah who has something to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bambina. <laughs> so the University of Santo Tomas College of Nursing in partnership with Manila House awards the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Charito Malong Consolacion for sharing her knowledge and experiences in the webinar entitled COVID-19 Vaccines, Treatments, Facts, and Controversies. Given this 13th day of April 2021, Manila, Philippines signed Professor Rowena Escolar Chua, PhD RN, the Dean of the College of Nursing, Reverend Father Julius Paul C. Factora, OPJCD, the Regent of the College of Nursing, and Sarah Maria Salazar, PhD RN, the Co-Chair of International Relations and Program. Thank you, Dr. And you. it was a very comprehensive uh, webinar about the vaccines. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much for having me. Oh, it was a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And see you all next time. Thank you. We hope to have you again. Thank you so Thank much. You. Good afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon.
Okay, have a good evening. Bye. Thank you, Miss Bambina. Thank you, Doctora. Thank you, Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, ma'am.